to the wonderful world of color. This is where the real fun begins. Today we are gonna work with our primary colors. We are gonna make a color wheel. If you understand where the colors are on the wheel, you'll be able to mix them much more quickly and get into the flow of painting without agonizing over how to create a color. You're gonna need your primary colors, your palette, a canvas, a brush, a palette knife, and your brush washer. Put white in the corner, yellow, orange, red, blue. And I put my, uh, this transparent earth orange, which I use as an underpainting and often to sketch out with over on the side. You put these in the same spot every time and you put them off to the side so that you have plenty of area to mix here on your palette. It also helps so when you start painting more and you're painting quickly and you're sort of in the zone of it, you don't have to stop to find your colors. You know where they are, they're always in the same place. You're gonna start by making a circle in the middle, small one, and then a circle around the outside, a bigger one. So it's like a donut. And then we're gonna put an X through it like that. And then you're gonna put two more smaller X's like that. We're gonna clean our brush and pull the mineral spirits out of the brush. We're gonna start at the top of the color wheel with red, the primary color. Clean your brush, pull out the moisture. Then I'm gonna go into my yellow. That goes one, two, three, Four spots down on the right. Oh, I didn't clean my brush enough. Look at that, it's orange. There we go. That pretty much took care of it. I'm gonna clean my brush better this time. Swirl it around in there. Pull all that juice out of my brush. And then I'm gonna go into my blue. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four on the other side from the red and add my blue. There are your primary colors. Clean my brush, pull out all that moisture, pull out all those mineral spirits. Mineral spirits are meant to break down the color and the paint. So if you leave some of that mixed in with your paint, you're sort of breaking down the vibrancy of the color. So here are your primaries. Now we're gonna add our secondary colors. So I have orange on my palette, but if you'd like to make your orange, you can just use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. Start with your yellow, add just a tick of red because the red is stronger than the yellow. Make yourself an orange, load up your paint. We talked about loading paint earlier. I turn it on its edge, I run it through that pile, I load up that paint. So the orange goes between the yellow and the red. Then I'm gonna clean my loaded brush, swirl it around in there, pull all those mineral spirits out of the brush, and I'm gonna make a green. I don't buy greens because there are so many different greens in nature that if you pull it out of a tube, sometimes you wind up with all your greens looking the same. So. I'm gonna make a green with yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. I'm gonna mix those two colors together. I'm gonna to load my brush and I'm gonna put it right between the blue and the yellow. There's my green. That's a beautiful green. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna pull all the mineral spirits out of the brush. <laughs> now I need to go between the red and the blue. I'm gonna make a purple. I'm gonna put down a little red. I'm gonna add a tick of blue. Mix the two together. That's pretty red still. I'm gonna add a little more blue to get it a little closer to purple. Oh, that was too much blue. Go back into my red. That looks, that looks pretty purple. I'm gonna load my brush. 
and I'm going to put it between the red and the blue. Now we're going to take another step. I have my red and I have my purple. If I want to make this a reddish purple, I'm going to add just a little tick more red to that pile. Maybe even a little more and put it in there between the red and the purple. And now I have a reddish purple. If I'm going to go in the other direction, I'm going to take a little tick of blue and add it to that purple. And load my brush and put it between the two of them. Now I have a bluish purple. Then I'm going to clean my brush, pull all the mineral spirits out of that brush, and I'm going to go over here. I have my orange and my red. I'll take a little tick of red, I'll add it to my orange, and I'll put it between the two of them. Now I have a reddish orange. I'm going to clean my brush. <laughs> this is how we bend colors. This is how we bend colors. Now I'm going to go between my orange and my yellow. I have my orange that I've already mixed. I'm going to add a little more yellow to it. And now I have an orange yellow. Yellowy orange. Look at that. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to pull all the mineral spirits out of that brush. And then I'm going to go between my yellow and my green. So I have my green here. I want to make a yellowish green. I'm going to add just a little tick of yellow to my green. And now I have a greenish yellow. Woohoo! I'm going to clean my brush. <laughs> I want to make a bluish green. I'm going to take a little tick of blue. I'm going to add it to my green. I'm going to load my brush and I'm going to go between the two and now I have a bluish green. Could have used a little more blue there. I'm going to add a little more blue. Now I have a bluish green. I'm going to take white, clean brush and white. And I'm going to add it just to the, just to the base of these things. So you can see what happens when you add a little bit of light. I'm going to clean my brush, take a little more white, go in here. A little more white, go in here. Just so you can start to experiment what happens with these colors when you add a little bit of white to them, you add a little bit of light. When we start painting and we're trying to bend a color and lighten it, first we're going to move around the color wheel to lighten it. Add another color to lighten it before you add white. Otherwise your paintings all look, uh... Oh, I didn't clean my brush. Did you see what happened there? This is what happens if you don't clean your brush. I didn't clean my brush. I grabbed some white and now my yellow, instead of looking lighter, looks greener. That's what happens when you don't clean your brush. Cleaning my brush and I'm pulling the mineral spirits out of that brush. I'm gonna get a little clean white on a clean brush and add it in there. Clean it again. I'm just going around all the, all the colors that I made so I can see what happens when they interact with white. I've got one left. I'm going to clean my brush. <laughs> and I'm going to go into the red. Kind of cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how colors interact with each other. A complementary color are the colors that are right across from each other on the color wheel. So I have my red and I have my green. They're right across from each other on the color wheel. When you put them next to each other, they vibrate. They're like, like beautiful together. But when you mix them together, they neutralize each other. And you wind up with a gray. Grays come in all different forms. So that's a, an extremely neutral green and an extremely neutral red. What happens when you add a little white to it? Sort of lighten up that gray. Let's do it with another complementary color. Let's try 
Let's try blue. The other side of the color wheel is orange. When you put them next to each other, look at that. Zing! They're beautiful. When you put them together, they neutralize each other, which sometimes can be an incredibly effective, beautiful, powerful thing. Some people will say, oh, the quickest way to kill a color is to add the complement to it. Yeah, it might, it might kill the color. It will kill the color. But sometimes, sometimes you want to kill a color. Because if you have everything in super high color and super vibrant, then the eye doesn't know what to look at. So it's your job as the painter to tell people what to look at. And a super vibrant color will draw their eye there. If you neutralize the color, it sort of sends them in a different direction. These things, this is where all the fun really begins. So let's do one more. Yellow is beautiful. And purple, which is red and blue together. Add this purple. Yellow and purple. That looks so dark. I should, you know, for this exercise, it probably would have been easier to do to use a lighter blue, a like a cerulean. It's difficult for you to see the purple here. That's a little more purple. Yeah, just a tick more blue. There you go. That's a dark purple, but it's purple. So purple and yellow. They vibrate next to each other. Zing, they're beautiful. Mix them together. And you get a very neutral color. So that's the magic of complementary colors. So now that we've created a color wheel and we understand how to mix and use our, our basic colors, our primaries and our secondary colors, we're gonna set up a little still life and we're gonna paint basic shapes with color. We're gonna apply everything we learned in value using our white objects to our colored objects.